Hello, welcome back to another video of mine, or if you're new to this channel, I hope you'll enjoy what you see here today. Today's video is a bit different in the sense that it's not a hardcore nuzlocke, but a rather relaxed playthrough of a Pokemon game, namely Pokemon Y. In the midst of the countless nuzlocke videos, I hope this 100 hours run video will be a breath of fresh air. Now, why 100 hours? If you're familiar with the Nuzlocke or Hardcore Nuzlocke challenges, I think we all can agree that these challenges do add a lot more layers to the Pokemon experience. While they do make the game a lot more fun and challenging, it does take away one important aspect of the Pokemon games, that is exploring and adventuring, and taking your time to enjoy yourself roaming about in the region. However, if this video was just 100 hours of me wandering about Kalos, this wouldn't really be worth making a video for. On that note, I've set aside a number of objectives for me to complete during these 100 hours, and here they are. Number 1. Obtain a Gold Trainer Card Similar to the other mainline Pokemon games, we're able to obtain different colored trainer cards. When we complete specific requirements, our trainer card's color will change. While the highest pedigree of trainer cards had always been the black card, starting with the Generation 6 Pokemon games, the highest color you can achieve would be a Gold Trainer Card. To achieve that color, your character must achieve three things. Enter the Hall of Fame, see or complete the Kalos Pokedex, and we must beat a battle Shadow Lane in the Battle of Maizan on our 50th victory. Once we complete either one of these, our trainer card color will progressively change, starting from blue to silver, and finally, to gold. Our second objective in this game will be closely related to the culture of Kalos, more specifically, the clothing boutiques. So, our second objective would be buying the most expensive set of clothing in Kalos. In Lumio City, there is a very exclusive clothing shop at Vernal Avenue, which has a specific set of requirements for us to be able to enter. The most expensive pieces of clothes are located here, and one of our objectives would be to enter the shop and buy one set of clothing. And that leads us to our final objective, money. To be able to afford the clothes, we must have money. So, after everything is said and done, we must end the game with at least 1 million Poké Dollars. Well, these are indeed the objectives. But honestly, Objective 1C is probably the hardest out of all of these. If any of you have tried the battle Maizan, you would know that the AI could be incredibly broken, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. One piece of rule I kept from the Hardcore Nuzlocke challenge is the level cap rule, so we won't overlevel our team past the next leader's ace during the league challenge. Professor Sycamore greeted us during this game's opening, and we gave him our name, Rich Fool. Well, we're not rich yet, but we'll get there. For now, we're just a broke fool. We woke up and changed into our adventuring clothes, but these set of clothes are absolutely horrendous. Yeah. We looked at ourselves in the mirror and resolved to earn enough money to be able to afford haute couture. For the first hour of the game, we spent it as usual, meeting our neighbor and rivals and making them all call us master. They would soon know their place as soon as we get more money. We picked Frobo the Froki as our starter and beat Shauna rather easily in a Pokemon battle. We super trained Frobo and caught a fletchling on the way to Santaloon, which was also super trained. After the first hour mark, we dropped by the first boutique of the game, but didn't find anything of worth there. We challenged the gym, and Talonbo had a pretty easy time with Viola's bug types. One batch down, and one step closer to that gold card. I spent the next chunk of minutes catching more Pokemon, and made my way to Lumio City. We formally met Professor Sycamore for the first time, and since this game likes to throw valuable Pokemon at us, we picked Charmander after beating the Professor in a Pokemon battle. At the third hour mark, we made it to Camp Fairy Town, where we just had to follow along with the game to progress the plot. Alongside Shauna, we found this rich person's furfra. We swore to be richer than this person and watched the fireworks with Shauna. Shauna said some cringe stuff afterwards and we exited quickly. We caught the Snorlax and named it Laxbo and made our way forward. We made it to Amred Town and super trained the rest of the team. We went to the nearby cave to solve the Team Flare incident and returned to the lab with some fossils. Before we knew it, we had reached the sixth hour mark. So large cities with Teague also had nothing worth noting, except for this bag, which we'll keep for now. It didn't really match the whole outfit, but it was a nice change of pace. We met Grant outside the gym, and he was all like, I'm the best cyclist around, take an HM. Of course, we couldn't take that lying down, and decimated him in the gym fight on the 8th hour on the first time of asking. We spent the 9th and 10th hour progressing with the game, as we encountered more of Team Flair and Karina and her gang of Lucarios. We made it to Shiller City, where we were greeted by our peasants. The gang made their way to the Tower of Mastery, where Serena was beaten soundly, making us the rightful successor of the Mega Bracelet. Not that we needed it for now, but it was nice to have. After grinding our team to the appropriate levels, we challenged Karina on the 11th hour. Galabo pretty much took charge here, as he stacked three sword dances. The rest is history, as he swept through the enemy's team with slashes. Even after beating her, 
she still wanted to battle us one more time. So, we went to the top of the tower to experience the joy of Mega Evolution for the first time. Of course the game gave us the better Lucario, so the battle wasn't too hard. She wanted to give us the Lucario, and we gladly accepted. Straight to the box it went. Once more, we were greeted by Serena, who gave us a Surf HM, bringing the 11th hour to a close. We opened the 12th hour by beating Serena in a Pokemon battle again, though our team at this point is nothing worth mentioning. After a bit of grinding, the combination of Rosebo and Laxbo managed to best the old Grassman, earning us the 4th badge in the league. Not long after, Charibo finally attained his final form, a Charizard. Dealing with Team Flare over at the power plant took a while, as I took the time to shuffle my team and capture a new addition to the roster first. After sorting through the party and grinding, we managed to clear out the power plant by the 15th hour. We also met the large ancient dude, muttering some ancient stuff. We met up with Shauna again at Lumio City, and she coaxed us into watching the Eiffel, I mean, Lumio's gym tower light up. Shauna proceeded to utter more cringe from her mouth, and then we hastily ran away from her. Since we were in Lumio's, we took the time to try our luck with the Haute Couture Boutique, but was promptly rejected because we didn't have enough style. The nerve of this lowly attendant. By the 16th hour, it took us very little effort to defeat Clement with Charibo and the newly evolved Gonbo the Vibrava, even though he died quite quickly. We got the 5th badge and met up with Sycamore and Lisandura after. At this point in the game, we needed to do some hardcore grinding, so we went to the Battle Chateau and spent another hour battling. On the dawn of the 17th hour, we stepped foot on Route 14 just to snatch another win against our rival and neighbor, Serena. We stopped by the mandatory haunted house just to discover the old spinster to be a money-grabbing old man. Over at Laver though, we finally got our first major update to our attire. We spent just short of 30,000 Poké Dollars, but it was definitely worth it. After some more grinding at the Battle Chateau, Rosebo evolved into a Roserade, seriously upping our firepower. By the 20th hour, we challenged Valerie for the 6th gym badge and had Charibo do most of the work. I thought Rosebo would have been more useful here, but I suppose brute force do play a hand in the game sometimes. After the gym, we quickly mopped up Team Flare over at the Pokeball Factory and made our way out of the city. While progressing through the game, we stop by the hotel in Lumios every once in a while to do part-time jobs as they greatly increase our style points, which are required to be able to enter the Haute Couture Boutique. Upon arriving in Dendemil Town on the 22nd hour, Professor Sycamore caught up to us and we had to explore Frost Cavern with Trevor. We chased Team Flare out of the cavern, enabling us to ride the Mammoth Swine through the piles of snow to the east of Dendemil. Before we get to do that though, we went back to the Battle Chateau and grinded our team again up until the 24th hour. We reached Anasar City after venturing through Route 17, and the first thing we did was check the boutique. It had some pretty interesting lineup displayed, but we ultimately decided to only change our hat and pants. Serena challenged us to another battle, but our newly appointed Bobo the Jolteon had no trouble defeating her team. Bobo's services were also called upon during the 7th gym battle, absolutely decimating Olympia's team. She had no chance. Upon exiting the gym, Lisandura announced his evil ways and his evil plans, and it was up to us to stop him. We spent a fair bit farming for hard scales before going to Lumio's to help some of the team members remember better moves. Of course, when we got back to Lumio City, stopping Lisandura was pretty low on our priority list. We went back to the hotel and took even more part-time jobs. We earned some cash and some much-needed style points. And finally, on the 26th hour, we were able to enter the old Couture Boutique on Vernal Avenue due to how stylish we are. We browsed through the collection and realized that we had nearly not enough money to buy a nice looking set of clothes. So, back to the Battle Chateau we went. With the silver and gold writ of invitations, we were able to rack up mad cash and it only took us almost an hour. With more money in hand, we went back to the boutique and spent a total of $360,000. I realized that we forgot to buy a new bag, so we went back in and purchased the vinyl messenger bag, costing us an additional $100,000. In total, Rich Fool now walks around with a total clothing worth of $460,000, accurately representing the name Rich Fool. With that, we completed one of our objectives for the run. For the icing on top, we bleach our hair to complete the new look. Before stepping into Team Flare's hideout, we went back to the Battle Chateau to grind again, taking us to hour 28. It took us a fair bit to go through the Flare hideout and Lumios, just because of the sheer number of trainer battles in the hideout. We got the chance to meet AZ again, and was informed of the history of the Great War and the ultimate weapon. At the end of the hideout, Galabo triumphed over Zerasic, and we pushed the blue button. It ended up being the correct one, but Zerasic ignored our decision by activating the ultimate weapon anyway. We flew to Geosenge Town, 
and defeated Lisandre in a Pokemon battle once more while flaunting our new set of clothes. 460k. We went through the Flare facility with Serena and had Shauna unlock the door at the end. We encountered Eveltal and of course caught it with the Master Ball. It was named Albo. Lisandre challenged us one final time, but with us playing on Switch Battle Mode, it was easy to find a counter for all of his Pokemon. Rosabo was the counter for his Mega Gyarados, and we safely ended the fight. Lisandra threw his futuristic eyewear on the floor in rage, not being able to accept the fact that we're just way more fashionable than him. At the 30th hour, we ended the threat of Team Flare and saved Kalos. We spent the rest of the hour progressing with the game. We beat Professor Sycamore again, overcame the triple threat of a battle on the bridge with the peasants, and finally reached Snowbell City. We only needed to find Wolfric, and we'd be able to challenge the final gem. Going through the forest to find the Pokemon Village didn't take too long, and we were able to coax the big man to go back to the gym once more. After a short trip to the Battle Chateau, we went to challenge him. His team was pure ice types, so I had Charibo make his Mega Evolution debut here, and absolutely ended his team. At the 32nd hour, we got the final badge, ready to face the league. We spent hours 32 to 34 completing miscellaneous tasks such as obtaining TMs, more grinding, and just generally preparing for the Pokemon League. Halfway through the 34th hour though, we started to head into the victory road. We were challenged by Serena again during the trek to the league, but she was never much of a challenge, was she? A combination of Frobo, Galabo, and Bobo was able to take her out. We safely made it to the league and took a commemorative photo. After that, we grinded some more, until the 36th hour. Then, it was time to face the league. Without the hardcore Nuzlocke rules, facing any Elite Four in the Pokemon games, even with the level cap, is quite refreshing. Frobo was able to one-shot all of Malva's fire types, Bobo absolutely annihilated Seabull's water types, Gombo and Charibo took care of Wigstrom, and Gombo went out again for Dresna. All in all, quite a breezy Elite Four challenge. My first in a long while. Of course, Diantha was not exactly hard either. She sent out her Hall Lucha first, so I sent in Galabo, who was able to take out the Fighting Bird with a Psycho Cut. Next was the Gorgized, so Charibo burnt it to a crisp with a Flamethrower. For her two fossil Pokemon, Galabo went back out again and had a pretty easy time with close combats. Gombo Dragon Clawed the Gudra, and then only the Gardevoir was left. I sent out Bobo, but forgot the Gardevoir had Trace, so now Bobo can't damage it with any electric type attacks. I switched to Rosabo, who ultimately died to a Psychic. He died for no reason at all. I wanted to play around some more, so I sent in Gombo, which was able to take out the Gardevoir with Earthquakes, after Diantha used just about all of her full restores on the damn thing. It sure feels good to take out a fairy type with a dragon type Pokemon. We beat Diantha and became the champion. We were invited to the Hall of Fame, effectively crossing out one of our sub goals for the run. We attended the parade with the peasants, and AZ asked for a Pokemon battle. We beat his ancient ass as well, and watch as he reunited with his Floette. After the credits rolled, we were informed that Sycamore was looking for us at Lumio Station. Shauna was waiting for us outside of our door, wanting to trade a Fennekin. We'd need it for the Pokedex, so we agreed. We went to the station after, and was given the TMV by Professor Sycamore. With the TMV pass, our next stop was Kalud City, where the Battle of Maizan is located. There, we would be participating in arguably one of the most frustrating things I've done in this channel so far. I decided to try my luck at the single battles for the objective, and went ahead to start the challenge. The normal single battles were easy enough, and Battle Chatelaine Nita wasn't difficult at all the first time around. The real challenge came at the super single battles. With the AI getting progressively better at countering your team, I had a lot of trouble reaching 49 consecutive wins. I would get to around battle 20 and get absolutely decimated. The whole process took a long while, even with the speed up function. Occasionally, you would meet with these group of veterans with the legendary team and they were just a huge pain to deal with. The downside about playing on an emulator is that the friend safari is virtually useless because we can't add any friends, so it was impossible for me to catch any Pokemon with a hidden ability. Great Pokemon like Protean Greninja or Poison Heal Gliscor are on that list. I was unable to secure them for use at the Battle of my zone. To take my mind off the frustrating battles, I toured around Kalos in between battles and tried to complete the Kalos Pokedex. While I was doing this, I was also researching ways to consistently get to the 49th consecutive win, and that was when I came across this Smogon article about the Battle of my zone. It recommended using Mega Kangaskhan and Gliscor, so taking that into account, I started to experiment around my team for a bit. And to cut things short, sure enough, at the 64th hour, I was able to reach battle 50. At this point, I was ready to get this over with. Nita sent out her Tornadus first, and I let a choice scarf Frobo. Frobo didn't hit as hard with the Ice Beam, 
but she was able to take the tornadoes down to the red before being taken out by a focus blast. I sent in a life orb Gliscor called Corbo next and used Ice Fang to take down the tornadoes. The Thunderous was next and it was so satisfying to see that the Skydrop doesn't do anything. The first Ice Fang took the Thunderous' health to the orange to trigger a berry and the second one took it out. Last was Nita's Landorus. And this is just an example of the AI being extremely frustrating. The Landorus landed an extra sensory flinch and this happened so many times during my other battles. They all seem to have amazing RNG. Anyway, Kangabo was up next, my last ray of hope. Kangabo scored the first move with a mega fake out, scoring decent hits. I wanted to end it on the next turn, but the Landorus was able to hit yet another extra sensory flinch. The Landorus hit again with one more extra sensory and I was just sweating bullets at this point. Thankfully, Kangabo survived and finished the damn battle with the Weather Trio. We beat the battle Shadow Lane at the 64th hour and was able to obtain the much coveted Silver Trainer card. So, the rest of the video had to be spent on completing the Pokedex. Since I'm playing on Pokemon Y, I needed to trade with another system that has Pokemon X. I booted another emulator directory and started trading with my Pokemon X save file from one of my Stone Evolutions video. Give that a watch if you haven't already. You might like it. Thankfully, there aren't too many version exclusive that we haven't already seen in the game, so the fact that we don't need to catch these Pokemon was a real time saver. But, that didn't mean it wasn't going to take me a while to complete. Excluding the last two legendaries, it took me up until around the 90th hour to log most of the Pokemon needed. Now, I did leave the game on idle at multiple points when I had other things to do, so in reality, it should have taken me only until the 80th hour or so. Anyway, we traversed Terminus Cave and found ourselves face to face with this gigantic green slug. Catching it wasn't too hard. Galabo managed to leave it on 1 HP with a false swipe, and Corbo managed to stall it long enough for us to catch it with a dust ball. It was named Zzzbo. Then, we headed to the Pokemon Village to catch our last encounter, a Mewtwo. The Mewtwo was definitely a lot harder to catch compared to the Ziggard. It was absolutely refusing to stay inside the balls and managed to take three of my Pokemon out. A Dusk Ball finally managed to catch it though. And now, we finally have every piece of the puzzle needed for the Gold Trainer card. Except maybe not. I forgot a Polipper. I looked up for a trainer that had a Polipper so I didn't have to catch one, and sure enough there was one in Azure Bay. She was a bit hard to find, and for that, she was absolutely annihilated. With this, we finally got everything we needed. At the 92nd hour, we got our Gold Trainer card, successfully bought out the most expensive clothing items in the game, and finished a run with more than $1 million in our wallet. This run was a lot of fun. It had its own types of stress and challenges, but ultimately, it was a nice and much needed break from doing primarily Nuzlocke videos. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this, or if you want more videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.